This area is so significant to us because the Strivers Row Bar was a bar in ode to this area of Harlem. And it was kind of central to my idea of what Harlem Chocolate Factory was going to be. I'm Jessica Spaulding, I'm 35 years old, and I'm the founder and CEO of Harlem Chocolate Factory. We started our business in 2015 in Harlem, New York. We had no snacks in my house. So I was like this little kid who just wanted candy. I started going toward the chocolate lane. My mother loved really, really high quality chocolate. And she always wanted me to know like the stuff that I'm talking about that's at like the corner store, the bodega, that wasn't real chocolate. And when we'd go to the library, I'm like, all right, let me take out this book on chocolate making so I could like do a recipe. And she was like, oh, you're into this? Let's go to the chocolate show together. And we would go to like the Salon du Chocolat, which is like this international chocolate show. And it was this bonding experience. And another part, my introduction to chocolate, it planted the seed on, well, where the black people at? None of the sweets that I like. Where's the banana pudding? with sweet potato pie. You'll see these different cultural representations, but none that resonated with my culture. We got like a bootleg cable box. <laughs> And so that expanded my world. And on Saturday mornings, Chocolate with Jacques Therese used to come on. I'd wake up and I'd watch the show. More than just reading the books and reading about things, I could actually physically do it. And there was no YouTube to go search, to go see how it's done. And he was really, really informative. And he told you all the stuff that you needed. And then the next year I met him at the chocolate show and I was able to get one of his books and he signed it for me. That was the moment that I transitioned from like reading about doing this thing to physically doing it. and it failed miserably. I was going to make a bunch of chocolate and give it away and then somebody famous was going to taste it and then I would become famous and then everybody would buy it. That was my sales plan. <laughs> I was a mom two times over, a single mom. I started working for a small business owner. I was doing like some cold calling to like get some of our products into the stores. I would just gotten off the phone and then I heard someone outside the door and it was the landlord saying that the business that was currently occupying the space would be closed <laughs> on Tuesday. That's the moment that I was like, all right, well, we absolutely now have nothing left. And I joined the New York Startup Business Plan Competition. Very pleased to announce our first place winner. Continuing the theme, Harlem Jessica Spall. Yes! In six months, in September of 2015, I won $15,000 to start my business. She was just like, I want all of the flavors and the combinations to be about Harlem and the black experience. I want to take photography and put the photos on the bars. And so I was really intrigued by like the Harlem Renaissance aspect of it because for me and for us, we stand on those people's shoulders. My name just kind of like started moving around in the business and they invited me to come do 
a pitch competition and I was like on high because I just won $15,000. Like these pitch competitions ain't nothing. And I walked into that damn pitch competition and it was so stacked. I was going up against five other food businesses. I didn't win. They were asking questions like, you know, like your food costs. And I had like these paper cutouts of what the bars were gonna look like, but I had the actual bar samples and stuff. And I think it was David Burke. It was the founder of Sam Adams, Jim Cook. And Jim was like, I'm so impressed by you and I'm so happy for you and you know just doing this and showing up in front of all these people and going for it that he kind of put the name in for us to do the media kits. So we would literally put the wrappers on the bars after she would go at night to make them. Then we would pack everything up, put it in our little push wagon. We had like a Costco push wagon. We would load everything in and literally haul it to wherever we had to go. In the beginning, I mean, we were pop-ups Queens, pop-ups Connecticut. We would sell out almost every single time. And so that was really kind of like the fire, like, okay, this is like a really good thing. You know, everybody likes it. Let's see, you know, how far we could take this to the next step. and it was only a few blocks from my house. So I had this little wagon and you could catch me walking through the projects, <laughs> walking home and walking back. I did all the events, all of our corporate partnerships. Just as the company has continued to grow and scale, of course, our roles have changed and molded. So now, you know, I do day-to-day -day operations, all of our shipping logistics, all of our national brand partnerships, national corporate partnerships as well. Just as we grew and more people found out about us, what we needed to do as a business change. So, you know, initially we weren't shipping. Then we have thousands of people, you know, reaching out to us. Okay, we have to ship. Or we were shipping at a smaller scale. And for example, like when Oprah called and we got Oprah's favorite things, it's like, okay, we have to scale in 90 days. I sent Oprah paper cutouts of what our bars would look like. Sent Oprah a note that basically said, I know it looks crazy, I know it's paper cutouts, <laughs> but I promise you, we will have the packaging. In six weeks, we had to figure out how we were gonna make it happen. She loves it, we love it. Can you make it happen? I'm like, yup. <laughs> well, we made it happen though. It was the wildest six weeks of my life. I realized the enemy of good chocolate was freshness. So we use all local cream, local dairy. In terms of our chocolate, we are very big proponents on fair and direct trade companies. So we don't have the space to manufacture the chocolate ourselves. I can't support slave labor as a black woman. It's incredibly important that we source ethically and we build that into the price and the cost. I'll die on the hill of a chocolate bar not supposed to cost you $2. 20, we did 300,000 that year and then we did 600,000 in 21, 22 was a little bit of a dip because our packaging company went out of business. We do basically about $500,000 a year. We outgrew this space, I would probably say the moment that we moved in here. This was supposed to be a small stop and we're in 2023. Growth is probably our biggest pain point. Being a black owned business in Harlem is extremely important to me because it shows the community, the children specifically, that you can have something in your neighborhood. Children come in here and they're like, wow, like you're a chocolatier, or like, wow, you have your own business. This is so cool. 
And I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world because that one interaction could be the impression that that person needed to change their whole life. It's needed. We need to be here. My TV was what? Like 13 inches, like a little 13 inch TV with a, a VHS attachment. <laughs>